What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are doing another round of installs on the FL5 Type R. We've already done the wheels and tires, we've already done the suspension, and we just did the brakes as well. Got a full track alignment. We did two track days with this car so far, and in between each track day, we're doing another series of upgrades on different components of the car to basically test and tune over time and see how the car does with each round of upgrades. The first track day, we did basically just the wheels and tires. We recently did the suspension, so we have lowering springs, we have sway bars, toe adjustments, camber adjustments, and the car did really, really well with those suspension upgrades. We did a full track alignment as well that is also still capable on the street without wearing the tires too much. But now it's really time to upgrade the final components of the car before we start digging into the engine and really enhancing power and cooling and all things like that. Transmission is all that's left before we start doing performance mods. So as you can see, we still have a stock intake stock down pipe there's no tune on this car whatsoever the honda is like 800 dollars. then you have to jailbreak it which is another 380 dollars. i'm pretty sure plus shipping back and forth and you're without a car for a couple of days so being that this is my daily driver i haven't really found time to be able to send my ecu out and get it tuned i don't think this car really needs any additional power it doesn't really need a tune to perform at its best especially for hpd track days if you're going for straight line speed you bought the wrong car this is not really the car to do that but yes it is nice to get an additional 50 horsepower out of the car for the track i think the stock tune is perfectly fine i haven't had any overheating issues with the car given that it's still spring and temperatures really haven't gotten really above 80 on any of these track days so we're gonna have to see on the next track day next week at njmp lightning how the temps do with this car but so far all we've done on this is a knn drop in air filter and we also change out the oil with hks 5w30 super premium oil so that will hold up to the temperatures a little bit better than the 0w20 that this car comes with from the factory so firstly we have new transmission fluid this is ac delco synchro mesh friction modified fluid so these are about 15 dollars per quart and the reason why we change this is just to help with track use and you're going through all the gears you're really putting a lot of stress on the car so you don't need to do this if you're just daily driving it and not doing any track days but we're going to be doing a lot of track days this season so doing this is a simple 45 dollar upgrade and while we're in there we're going to do the magnetic drain bolt this is also not really necessary but just for 15 bucks why not just throw it in there another important thing here and i highly recommend this is the stainless steel braided clutch line and it is specific to the fl5 so the fk81 i believe is a little longer than the fl5 one this is about i think 40 dollars and just like your brake lines they're made out of rubber and when they go under high stress high temps high pressure the rubber starts to expand and you lose all that nice brake pressure and clutch pressure so this is a hybrid racing heavy duty transmission detent spring so what this does is it actually helps increase the preload on the transmission's shift fork it increases stiffness of left to right by i believe almost 100 percent and front and rear by about 18 percent the other things that we have here from prl and you guys may get this from acuity these are the shifter cable bushings that sit on top of your transmission so like i said all these parts are going to go in at the same time because you do have to remove the air box you have to remove the battery so in order to get all this done that needs to come out so you don't want to do that over and over again all this is under under 50 dollars, so it is a fairly cheap upgrade especially if you could do it yourself so these are the shifter cable bushings like the d10 springs these are going to help make the shifter feel a lot better more direct stiff and go into gear more nicely similar to like the s2000 shifter and lastly we have the shifter base bushings and this is the only part here that actually does not go into the engine bay so there's four of these and they actually go into the shifter base 
Makes sense, right? This has to come off with a panel popper. The shift knob comes out, the boot, everything comes out. All right, small update. So we have the air box, battery, battery tray, all taken out of the car and we have full almost full access to the transmission we have to remove this turbocharger cold side inlet pipe out so it's just two hoses there's a 10 millimeter here 10 millimeter there there's a bolt here it looks like a 12 millimeter so we got to take this pipe out so that we can get further access to the top of the transmission because here's one and then there's two shifter cable bushing. We have full access to the clutch hose here. It's this rubber piece, as you can see. So it's a 10 millimeter up here, 10 millimeter right there. We are gonna have to raise the car up, so that's why it's sitting on the jacks right now. And then once we remove the belly pan, then we can get access to the oil drain bolt and so that we can bleed the slave cylinder. And that you'll be doing from bleed nipple right there. Got a lot of things going on here at once. You're killing like five birds with one stone. This is the oil fill hole, so we'll have to take that out. And the two bolts for the detent springs, there's one under here, this wiring harness. There's one right there. And then there's another one there. It's kind of hard to see without the light, but yeah, there's a lot going on and we're gonna have all these parts installed very shortly Grab our 12 millimeter socket so under the tab where this wiring harness was attached to there's a 12 millimeter bolt So we're gonna take that bolt out It's not held in by too much torque. So that's one bolt fully remove that all right So we have that bolt fully removed. This is the one that's longitudinal so that will just pop right out just like that. So you can clearly see the difference with the OEM one up top and the hybrid racing one down low. Way more spring, higher spring rate. It's gonna give us a much stiffer shifter. Put that bolt back in. So we just cracked that other bolt loose. So this one will slide out very easily. It's a 12 millimeter. I found it very helpful to use a ratcheting wrench with an adjustable head. So here is the other one that spring out. Let's put this one in now. Same process, you put it into the bolt. Already immediately, I feel that the left to right has gotten more resistant. Yeah, that feels way tighter. It springs back to the center way faster. So we have to remove this cotter pin from the top. So I think the easiest way to do this is literally just pry it kind of off like that and then carefully pull it out. There we go. Just like that. Put that to the side. Then this whole thing will just slide right out like that. So to remove this, we're literally just separating it with a flathead here. So we separated that piece. They come apart. It's two pieces. So we got the old rubber bushing taken out you really just got to use a pry tool and push it out because it's held in by these lips on the side I'm not really afraid of damaging it because we're not using these ever again this one's a little bit smaller so you can't get them mixed up at all so here is the PRL one versus the OEM rubber one so the install is exactly the reverse this is gonna sit on the top and then we're gonna put that new cotter pin in but before we do that it does come with a tube of lube that we're going to use on the o-rings so that sits nicely in here prl shifter bushings are now fully installed the old one on this one was actually kind of annoying to take out so we basically destroyed that bushing side to side feels good because of the HD detent springs, the shifter bushing definitely helps. The front and rear, the engagement into gear is amazing now because of the shifter cable bushing itself. So definitely both are a nice upgrade. So now that we're underneath the car, we have to remove the belly pan in order to drain transmission oil. 
and also to change out the clutch line so that we can remove the fluids and everything with a drain pan. So there is Phillips head, Phillips head, and there's a bunch of flat heads that we have to take out. This is the same as the 10th gen Civic and I just did an oil change on one the other day. So this is the transmission right here and that is the drain bolt. So you're actually gonna use the end of a 3 8 inch extension to crack that loose. Don't confuse that for the engine oil. It even says here engine oil and it's a completely different bolt that goes towards the back of the car. I mean, this is a good opportunity for you to do an oil change as well. And then here you actually see we have visual of the clutch line from the bottom as well, but it's actually easier to remove the clutch line from the top because that is where all the nuts are. But we're gonna have to put a drain pan down here just to catch all the dripping brake fluid and transmission fluid that we're about to take out. And the reason why I said brake fluid from the clutch fluid is because clutch fluid is actually brake fluid. And on this car specifically, they share the same reservoir. So this goes to the brakes and the clutch. There is not a separate clutch reservoir in there anywhere else. So starting from the top of the transmission, we're actually gonna use this 3 ace extension that we have here, and it's gonna go right into the top of the bolt. And then we'll just crack it loose and remove the fill plug. There is a washer too, so make sure you don't lose that. And now we have our fill plug for the transmission fluid completely opened. Make sure you're able to remove this first before you drain the oil, because if you can't remove this, then you're gonna have no oil in your transmission. So this is the DC Sports 20 by one and a half magnetic tip compared to the OEM drain plug. And the magnetic tip will help collect any shavings that may happen. Hopefully there are no shavings because if you know how to dry properly, there shouldn't be any. So while that's finishing up draining, the last thing we need to do before we fill the transmission pan to remove this bolt right here. And the purpose of this is so that you do not overfill the transmission with too much fluid. Basically, you unbolt this, you fill the transmission with about 2.3 quarts of fluid. And once this starts, to overfill it will pour out and once it stops pouring out that's when you know your transmission is fully topped off at the perfect level and you'll put this bolt back 18 millimeter socket head and we're going to torque this to 32 foot pounds and then we can prepare the trans fluid with 2.3 quarts all right, so we've already filled two quarts into the transmission. We're gonna keep an eye on that fill bolt at the bottom to make sure that some fluid starts to drip out. Once that happens, we're gonna stop adding fluid. And once that fully stops dripping, we can add the bolt back to the transmission. You can see that it is now dripping out. We have our 10 millimeter flare wrench right here. So we're gonna use that to now remove the clutch line. So there is a bolt here and a bolt there. Take out both bolts and then once they're loose, you're gonna start to notice that brake fluid will drip out. It's perfectly fine. That's why we have the drain pan down there at the same time. And then we'll use a pair of pliers and we'll pull out these retaining clips which hold the line in place. And then that rubber hose will come right out. So this one actually took a lot of force so I kind of got a mallet and helped break the seal on that. But luckily we're using the flare wrench so that it does not strip the actual bolt. So now we have to do this one. While we're in here, we're actually gonna remove the slave cylinder because in order to take that out, you have to remove the clutch line anyway. So there's the hard line that goes to the clutch line. Now that that's removed, we can remove the slave cylinder that's right there with the 12 millimeter bolts right on top. And we're actually gonna try and remove out the clutch delay valve inside the slave cylinder. And that's gonna help us get more direct shifts as well. The clutch delay valve is actually there to help prevent your transmission from shock, usually going into first to second, and sometimes you get gear locked out because the delay valve actually slows down the whole shifting process. So here is the slave cylinder complete removed with that hard line. We got the two bolts, so we're gonna put that aside. So essentially the clutch delay valve is located in here. So we have to remove that C retaining clip in there, and then we can disassemble that and remove the clutch delay valve and put it all back together. 
All right, so that was the biggest pain in the butt was getting this retaining clip out of the slave cylinder. Crappy uh, pick tool from Harbor Freight, very small flathead. Basically, you need to hold the flathead against one edge to keep it in place while you pick the other side out. Finally got it after like 10 minutes. I've heard some people spend like an hour just trying to get this clip out, but got lucky and it is out. So now we can fully disassemble it. All right, so we moved that gasket piece that covers the slave cylinder here. That plastic right there is the clutch delay valve. Flyers in here to be able to grab onto this and pull it out. Ah, there we go, popped right out. So this piece of plastic right here is the delay valve and that is what is causing such slow shifting. So once you take this out, you don't have to put it back in. All you're doing now, get this lubed up again, clean it out, get any dirt out, and then you're gonna seal it right back up. Got the new PRL clutch line. Once this is done, we can go ahead and bleed the system. You definitely do not want to start to drive your car if you do not bleed your slave cylinder because the pedal is going to go straight to the ground. You're not going to be able to get into gear. It's going to be a bad time. We're going to put this back in in reverse order, alternating between this thing and my iPhone because that thing is not fun to carry, especially with brake fluid all over my hands. So, all right, so we have the clutch line completely installed. Everything is fully tightened. You can see the line right here. It's all stainless steel now. So everything is a hard line to the slave cylinder. Retaining clips are back in. Below is a 19 millimeter wrench that you need to hold while you tighten the hard brake line. Here's the slave. It goes to the transmission fork and we tightened up the slave cylinder back to the transmission. Here is the bleeder screw. So we need to now bleed the slave cylinder of all the air that's in the system. So that way we have full clutch pressure. I'm gonna grab some more brake fluid and top this off while we're doing the bleeding process. So you never want this to run completely dry. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the nipple, press the clutch pedal down, and then air is gonna come out of the system. You're gonna tighten that up and then pull the clutch pedal back up and then repeat that process over and over again until no more air comes out of the system. All right, so we have the bleeder screw tightened. We're gonna pull the pedal back up off the ground, therefore sucking more fluid into the line. Now we crack the bleeder screw open. You can see more air is coming out. Now we're gonna push the pedal down to get more air and fluid out. Now we tighten it. And you're gonna repeat this process until air no longer comes out. Last but not least, it is time to install the PRL shifter base bushings. So we gotta get some panel poppers to remove this silver trim right here. And then the four bolts will be right in the shifter assembly popped up this panel here so when you use the panel popper the black piece is going to want to come out of this first looking like this however you can actually just remove the silver piece from the black trim because that's all we're really going to need to do we don't have to remove all of this so i got a very stiff panel popper and i just wedged along the edges like this so there's one two three and four bolts that we're gonna have to take out. That one's gonna be tricky. We're gonna see how we can access that one because the shifter rod is in the way. We just did one to test out how it works. You use a, just like a flathead and you kinda gotta pry this out from a good angle like that. Once you pry it out, there's gonna be a bushing on the top. So this is a metal bushing on the top. So this one feels like uh, steel. And then below that, if you push this up, you can actually remove it from the bottom. It's gonna be a rubber bushing. So we already took this one out and put the new PRL one in. It's aluminum top and bottom held in by an Allen screw, four millimeter Allen head. We got these three all replaced. The one down there as well. That one, 
we're having issues accessing so i'm going to figure that out on another time it's probably going to have to remove this side panel or this rod somehow but i can't get it a 10 millimeter down there i can already notice that everything just feels a lot stiffer this is not moving anywhere so at this point everything is completely buttoned up on the transmission we put the intercooler pipe back on torque these bolts on put on that vacuum hose make sure all the connectors that we took off are in place all the harnesses that we had to unclip are clipped so you don't want to have to put the intake box back in here and then realize you forgot something and that's really it so we're just putting everything back when you first start the car after removing the battery you're going to realize that the dash is all going whack right now so this is completely normal you just gotta drive the car around for like 10 minutes and then shut it off and turn it back on and it should go back to normal so we're gonna go for a drive and let's see how the shifter feels oh off the bat i noticed that the clutch delay valve worked removing that made that second gear engagement very quick like as soon as i lifted my foot off the pedal it was engaged so that is new for sure oh yeah that goes quick the shifter feels a lot stiffer there's basically no play in the shifter anymore Oh yeah. This feels good. And if you guys already noticed, my cluster went right back to normal. So it's got no more of those warning lights. We've done almost everything we can to this car without touching the engine and all of that. So. I think that's really important about this car is that you don't need to touch the engine or tune it or anything like that to make this car better. I've done a lot of stuff to this car already and we just did all this in preparation for our third track day. Shifter feels rock solid now. It is, it's direct, it goes where it wants to go. Clutch delay valve delete makes the gear engagement, the shifts really quick. I'm happy. Yo, the first to second is crazy now. You actually heard the wheels chirp? That is sick. So the issue with this car with the clutch delay valve is that you wouldn't be able to really get into second all that fast. And that was literally instantaneous when that first to second gear. So. Yes, it's supposed to save your transmission from all that shock, but this is a performance car. My goal with this is to drive it hard all the time, still daily drive it, but I'm not gonna go soft with this car. I plan to keep this for a very long time. We're gonna try to plan even more track days in between that. I'm gonna try to get a total of at least eight track days this summer. This car is so quick, man. I'm telling you, you don't need a tune, you don't need a downpipe, maybe an intercooler to keep the temps down, but really, if, and this is just my opinion, based on how I use the car, but you don't need this car to go any faster in a straight line. You need this car to go faster on the turns. You need it to brake faster, you need it to hit the turns faster, you need to get in and out of the turns as fast as you can, and adding all that power is not gonna help you. The first thing you should do is a suspension and put a better tire on this car. From just my two track day experiences, add camber, get an alignment that has a little bit of toe out in the front, toe in in the rear, upgrade your brake pads, do your fluids. Like these are all pretty inexpensive mods at the end of the day. People are saying, oh, why do you modify a type bar? The car is perfect as it is out of the box to take it to the track and enjoy it every day. Yes, it is. This car as is, I would say, is prepped for the track 
way better than a lot of other cars in its price range. Yes, the car handles great. It does great right out of the box, but all of these enhancements I just did made this car feel like a legitimate track monster. Better than out of the box by far. And like I said, I'm stressing the fact that I didn't do a tune, I didn't do an exhaust, I literally did nothing but a Canon filter and changed the oil. That's all there is on this engine. Everything else is supporting mods. Brakes, suspension, transmission, that's it. And when I say transmission, we're not even doing the transmission, we're literally just changing bushings and fluids and that's it. Long-winded video explanation and opinions, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and look forward to the very next track day. I'm sure this car is going to do phenomenally. I need a driver mod. I need more seat time. I've only had two track days under my belt, but I'm literally hooked to on the track. And I highly recommend it to all of you if you're able to afford track days. I know it's a very expensive occasion. It's usually four or $500 just to get on the track. And then you have to get boarding if it's far away and all the gas and the time and take days off from work if you have to. It's expensive sport, but once you do a track day, you will not feel like you did not get your money's worth. So that's it guys. Make sure you smash that subscribe and like button and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys.